You just keep on listening till you run out of laughs And the gaming gets done and you have a lot of fun For the people who are still alive Welcome to the Drunk Tank Podcast, episode Hello. 115 I feel like I know that song from somewhere <laughs> It's got a familiar ring to it Yeah, That was pretty awesome Yeah, I believe that was Renee Trinity on the website, or Trinity Renee? She's got a good voice. I'll put that in the link. Don't make sure we get the right the right Trinity credited. I, go. I gotta say this for that song. That was one of those songs that I liked it the first time I heard it. Yeah. I don't know if it was just because it was at the end of Portal and I was so happy to hear it, but uh, usually it, it, it takes me a while to like a song. Yeah, it was unexpected uh, as well. After was playing the game, you had no idea that was coming. Yeah, it was nice. <clears throat> so, I wonder what process they added that in to the game. Like, was it? Did they initially plan to do minute? it? Or? Yeah. Were they playing plan the game around that song? No, I don't think they did that. <laughs> so they got the song, like, we got to make a game now. Yeah. It's one of those things, too. You're almost afraid to pitch it originally. It's either going to be the best idea ever, or everyone's going to laugh at you because it's fucking retarded, but it's funny. It worked. All right, Brandon. Thanks, Brandon. Well, I think by, I think by that point, they uh, they'd already established the aesthetic of the game, right? The funny science stuff. So. I think so. Yeah. It was it was a nice payoff for sure. Did you like the the song at the end of Portal Two better or worse? No, you know it didn't leave any impression on me at all. I I, I could not hum that song right now if you ask me what it was. I don't yeah. even think I could tell you what the title of it was. <clears throat> My kids like that one better. Oh really? Yep, they like the new one better. Yeah, I don't even remember it. I'm sure it was good. I yeah, just, I yeah. thought it was okay. Yeah. Still alive was so good though. Yeah, it's very good. All right, so we made it. We made our decision on that. I don't <laughs> I don't know how I got stuck with the uh, oh. Fuller's ESB, yeah. the world's original ale. That, that beer's terrible. Ales have come a long way since the original, let me tell you. This is uh, this is imported from Britain. We should send it back. Yeah, just like half built. Like, half <laughs> like, like, no, yeah. like one drink taken and be like, no. That, that, that beer has like a sludge at the bottom oh. of it. Like this thick layer of sediment in it. Maybe you guys are drinking it creeps me like, out. I should have shaken it first. Oh. Yeah, you shake a beer before you open it. That's the feeling I get when I drink it. It's like they shouldn't you shouldn't look at it to see how much you have left. You should just take like one of those metered sticks and dip it in there. And be like... <laughs> That's how you know how much you have left to drink. Gross. Hey, congratulations on still being alive, guys. What oh, happened? Oh, from the rapture. Yeah, yeah, we survived. Well, the, the, it wasn't that the world was ending. It was that the good people were going to heaven. Right. And then that we would be left in five months of hell on earth. Right. Yeah. yeah. We could still no, be seven in hell years. on earth. Like, five, five, seven five years? Months. It was five, five months. months. In October, really? it was October. It feels like the end of the world. Like the of the world. All the natural disasters that are happening at the moment. God you damn, see all the tornado damage? see Joplin, Missouri last night? Yeah. That's crazy. 75% of that town is just gone. Mm -hmm. And 89 people died. Thank God Branson, Missouri was spared. Yeah, exactly. I don't know what the uh, what summer vacation I'd have this year if Branson was gone. I can't <laughs> imagine, like, you always expect tornadoes to be in places like Texas or Oklahoma, right? Or Kansas. Kansas, Kansas mm -hmm. I think, yeah. Yeah, it's like more than like Midwest. Minneapolis, Minnesota got hit. They had a tornado? Yeah, yeah. Really? Like you in Minneapolis, you gotta be fucking. I wonder if they could have a that. tornado blizzard. Don't you consider? <laughs> Wouldn't that be the worst? It'd be like it'd be like the day after tomorrow. <clears throat> but I consider Minneapolis to be in the Midwest, don't you? I mean, like Midwest way at the top of... though. Northern Midwest. Yeah, but it's so cool up there. I don't figure that they have the the conditions they have, for like, it. Like extreme weather though. I mean, it's it got really hot summers. Like, really yeah, extremely winter. shitty. Yeah, it snows like nine months out of the year there, doesn't it? No, the summers get really hot. Yeah, for three months and then it's snowing again. I mean, <laughs> would you consider Texas to be in the Midwest because it's? In the middle? I think the Panhandle, the northern Panhandle. Texas. Yeah. yeah. Tornado country. Texas is big. We were talking about when we travel to California by car, half the trip you're still inside of Texas. Yeah. yeah. It's discouraging for road trips because then you get out and you're still surrounded by states you don't really want to be in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, where should we go? Oklahoma or Arkansas? Eh. Just to name a few. <laughs> we hate all other states. Yeah. We don't hate anyone in particular. But, Arkansas. Uh, uh, were you guys? Did you guys at all, like, even for a moment, consider or think about the rapture thing in no, any way? I was a little annoyed that everyone talked about it so yeah. much. Honestly, I, I, I was ready for it to be done, just so I wouldn't have to hear about it anymore. Yeah, I was ready Carried. for all the shitty jokes on Twitter to stop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was done with bad rapture jokes. In fact, I'm getting kind of done with Twitter around like major pop culture events because then Twitter turns into like this really crappy open mic night at a bad comedy mm -hmm. club, mm -hmm. and everybody just starts like coming up with these. Terrible jokes. Yeah. Terrible. And everybody's, do, every, they just keep going. And it just doesn't stop until the event's over. Whatever you, uh, it is. Yeah. You just described the office to me. I don't know. Our office. Is it? Yeah. Just terrible jokes and nobody knows when to stop. <laughs> but at uh, least in the office, we can't like retweet. Lunchtime or rooster teeth. We can't retweet what everyone's saying <laughs> over and over again. No one expected the rapture to come about. But if it did, if the rapture happened, would you feel like an asshole? Because you knew? 
you had a warning, would you just be like, I, I was just the dick who just made fun of it the whole time. Yeah, but but here, here's happening. Me and the of other six billion people. Of course we would. What kind of question is that? Would I be sorry I was in hell? Yeah. No, 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 no. If everybody knew went to heaven, but you didn't go, why'd you feel that? All this fire and brimstone. It's kind of shitty. Did you really interpret that as what I said? I said, would you feel like an asshole because you were specifically warned about it? And you're just making fun of it. To be fair, we've all been warned all our lives, right? I mean, there's always somebody warning you about. Yeah, but you're like, specifically, the world's going to end at 6 o'clock tomorrow. You literally don't do anything different. Yeah. And the world's gonna, and you're like, shit. If I would have oh, known, if I would have known that, I would have like, you know. What fucking... are you supposed to do? You've got like, do you think that God's gonna buy it if you've got like six hours and you finally do something? So you don't think yeah. there'd be any difference in knowing you only had an hour to live? You wouldn't. Nothing would change. I know things. Uh, things would change, but I don't think I would. I would hope to get to heaven at that point. Like. <laughs> oh no no! I'm just saying you have an hour to live. Do do something. Do something. Brandon, I don't know that anyone knows what you're saying right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm so asking confused. With a very obvious answer, of course. It's like. If someone warned you, don't walk in the room, you're going to set on fire. You walked in the room and set on fire. Would you feel like an asshole? be like, no, what did I know? <laughs> the answer is, of course, yes, of course I would feel bad if it came true, you know? There's this guy on YouTube who posted this argument about global warming, about why we should prepare for global warming. And it was this logical argument based on grids of two scenarios, that either we oh, right. prepare for it or we don't prepare for it. And then either it, it happens it or it doesn't. doesn't happen. And so those are the four cases, you know, the combination thereof of those two things. And he made a case for saying that there, we have to prepare for global warming and environment change because if we don't prepare for it and it happens, then the world is destroyed. But if we prepare for it and it doesn't happen, then all we did was spend a little bit of extra money. But that's, a, that's the stupidest argument ever because the people who don't prepare for global warming – don't believe in it. They don't believe in the science of it. If you took this guy's same argument, and the reason I bring it up is people think this is one of the greatest arguments ever made on YouTube. It's got like millions of views and all these likes. And people are going, you're brilliant. This is the perfect example of why we should prepare for climate change. But if you apply the same argument to dragons taking over the earth, it still applies. Like right. we should all, <laughs> or like a you know, vampire breakout. Right, yeah. yeah. We should all build vampire cages. And it's like, sure, if the vampires don't come and take over, then all we did was spend some money on some cages. Yeah, you've no got big a, deal. You've got a ton of garlic, but garlic's good for you anyway, so you just cook <laughs> with garlic more. Yeah, I mean, I, trust me, I believe in climate change, and I believe that we should do things to, I, you know, why, why wouldn't you want to make the environment better? I mean, I understand why people have that argument, like they want to destroy the environment that they live in. But, you know, it's just such a, it's like this, logical fallacy that he built and presented to everybody and they all just like yay this guy's the smartest well, if you, guy if you look at it at face value it makes sense this, once, once you get to the deeper thinking that it's a it's a little flawed I once, once you add in vampires I don't think it's a bad right. idea to prepare for dragons and vampires I mean we feel <laughs> well, stupid if we don't I now, think right? everybody in, the, in this room uh, would not be surprised by that <laughs> um, I read an article in the Statesman the local paper uh, a couple days ago saying that with climate change that it's speculated that Austin will become like San Angelo like just super arid and dry really? yeah uh. So you know what that means, East Texas. Yeah, well, dude, I spent. Funny you should say East Texas. Don't encourage him. We were in the woodlands. Well, East Texas is the new Austin. We yeah, were in this climate change. I'll tell you where we should oh, go. Sorry. We were in the woodlands this weekend for watching a friend do an Ironman competition, and I got to thinking. I don't ever. I don't have really a lot of experience with East Texas, and it's like all these pine trees, and it's very different from where mm -hmm. we live in Austin. And the only times I've really been there, uh, I went to the woodlands once with you, and then we went to Nacogdoches one time for an RVB event. And uh, so I started, I got on Google Maps and I started looking at the mo easternmost towns in Texas, mm -hmm. like Miami, Texas. Miami, Texas. Yeah, Marshall, Texas, like all these different places. And uh, it's a whole different world over there. And you can explore, that's, Google Maps is amazing. You can explore entire cities in seconds and feel like you've been there. Hmm. And we should, I think we should all move to Marshall, Texas, because you can buy a mansion in Marshall, Texas with like five acres for like 120 grand. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the hell you would do once you had it. Because I don't think there's cable or internet. Do you have internet? High speed internet? I don't know. No, I'm not you going can, if there's no high speed internet. You can, we can move the whole con we can move the whole company to Marshall, Texas tomorrow. See, we'll probably we can't if there's not high speed internet. <laughs> Do you know what our company does? Just get a run on the Cat Five. <laughs> well, I'll tell it to Austin to there. Listen, you asshole. I just want to point out that I had this conversation with you about six years ago. About moving to Marshall, Texas? No, about it was maybe even sooner than it might have been like right after Red versus Blue started to take off, and I said to you. We, this internet money is the same anywhere. Like, we don't have to be based in Austin, Texas in order to have this business. I do remember I, this. I agree. We, we you, can you, live you, anywhere we want I to would, in the world. Don't call me an asshole. I was on board. We could live to the, we can move to the middle of Kansas. We can move to there the was, south there, of France. There was that town for sale for, like, super cheap or that we, we could have bought. we were going to buy the grade school in Kansas. That's right. We, yeah. I'm the one that wanted to move to Scotland with you. There was Cairo, a, Cairo, Illinois. Cairo, there Illinois. was that town right outside of Lockhart, Texas that was entirely for sale. Yeah, right? that's that one. It had that, that like, one. general store, yeah. and then it had all the little houses around it. 
That'd be cool. We're we we could have made like our own Main Street in Disney World, where it's we like we were gonna call it Roosterville. Yeah, Roosterville? It's, gonna be awesome. it's like every store on the on the street is a liquor store, <laughs> <laughs> a liquor store and a food trailer, like alternating down and the road. Yeah, uh, and then one souvenir shop. There <laughs> were <laughs> two souvenir shops. Let's okay. not be crazy here. Right, yeah, we got mortgages to pay. There you go. Uh. No, I'm all about it. I mean, I don't want to leave Austin, but <laughs> I'd rather. Yeah. I don't. I think I'd rather avoid East Texas if at all possible. It's, tempting, it's just I mean, a whole if, different if world. At, we were looking for a while. We had a friend who was living in Davenport. Iowa, is mm-hmm. that right? Yes. And we were looking at houses there, and there were like eighty thousand dollars you could buy, like a house that was built in eighteen, like the eighteen hundreds, mm-hmm. that was like five bedrooms. I mean, it was ridiculous. Like a four thousand square foot house, like Victorian, like wraparound porch, three story house. That's gorgeous. That would cost you like five million dollars in Austin. Which is really tempting, but then you get there and you're in Iowa. And if you like, and also I bet it's Commerce, got like no heater. And the you Chamber freeze. of Commerce in Davenport gives one free mansion away for every person that moves to the town. I was, <laughs> Iowa's awesome. What's wrong with Iowa? You know, Iowa is Not is. A, I'm just secretly, hating all the states. It's sec- secretly one of the most progressive states in the union. They have uh, you. You would like it a lot because I think they have uh, legalized gay marriage there. Oh yeah, I think so. Wait, really? In you Iowa, Jeff, you gonna get gay married, Griffin? <laughs> no, but I like gay marriage. marriage. <clears throat> our marriage, I, I gotta say, our marriage is on the rocks anyway. We were in. We ate at a sports bar in uh, the Woodlands, and I I love you. You're a great woman. Yeah, Jeff fell in love. But I'm going to leave my wife for the, uh, the, hostess for the hostess of the sports, the sports bar. bar. <laughs> in the Woodlands. In the Woodlands. Well, to be fair. We she, had a good run. Yeah. I can't blame you. She was really hot. <laughs> she was majestic. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you're listening, and I know you're not, I just want to say hi. I just want to say hey. If you happen up? to be listening to the podcast. She was really good with, uh, I mean, she was good with our orders. She was friendly. She brought you food. That's Called important. Did she bring you liquor? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Dude. What else do you want? That's Sorry, Griffin. Takes. Weak drinks, though. She oh, had, weak uh, drinks? Well, that might not be her fault. She's the deliverer. Don't kill the messenger. Really right. big <laughs> hands. Oh, that's yeah, good. Was, <laughs> she was great. Yeah, so my marriage is ending. That's, <laughs> that's too bad. Place. I'm sorry to hear it. I got to figure out how to get her to uproot her life and move from the Woodlands to Austin. Hmm. I don't think that would that, be that's, uh, that's a hard sell. <laughs> <laughs> Um, did you see that the uh, the podcast was featured uh, in iTunes last week? No, was in, it? In 2009, uh, the Supreme Court of Iowa <coughs> overturned a 1998 state law barring same-sex marriages. Oh, so does that mean it's legal or does that just mean it's not illegal? It's not illegal. They they, they overturned it, so they're progressively moving towards gay marriage. So. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's go get a mansion and get gay married. And we can become chiropractors, too. Yeah, this yeah. is the chiropractic. It's the chiropractic center of the U.S. All right, I have to switch. This Artie Lang has a great joke. Have you ever been to a wedding that wasn't gay? <laughs> ever? Have you ever been to a what? <laughs> have you ever been to a wedding that wasn't gay? <laughs> ever in your entire life? Mm-hmm. The tool. Your, your wedding was pretty, uh, even for being like uh, fun and, you know, subversive, your wedding was had a high theatrical value to it. Well, come on. We had a puppet show. Puppet show and all that. Magician. You One man band. You were a mariachi guy? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I married you as a mariachi. How many people have you married? You married my brother. Two. Okay, I had somebody ask recently if they if you'd be interested in. And I know. I I was, people keep asking me, and I'm. You I'm, should do it. I, no, no, no. I'm two, I'm two for two. Why don't. would I fuck with it? I thought you. Were why am I gonna? Why would I marry people I don't even know? I was. Surprised. Well, you were two for two until those trips to the woodlands. <laughs> <laughs> well, let, let me uh, take care of your next marriage too, and <laughs> I'll, still, I'll, still, I'll yeah. still be good. Am I yeah. crazy? I have almost no recollection of Gus's wedding. Where was your wedding? It was at um, Green Pastures. South Austin? You don't remember he made us wear those powder blue tuxedos? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, now that I remember. Okay, yeah. now, 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 now <laughs> I just like, couldn't remember his wedding. We <laughs> didn't really have a bachelor party, so we didn't. Really, we weren't really drunk, but somehow I got incredibly sick and nauseous, yeah. and I looked like I was dead, and everybody just assumed that I... We might... There might have been... Did we have tacos that morning? Because I felt weird, too, that day. I don't remember. Maybe it was the marriage. I, was I think really Esther was sick, sick, too. Esther was fucking drunk. Oh, she was hungover. No, no. She was drunk. She was hungover, and then she drank more that morning and got drunk so again. So she was wasted during your wedding? Yeah. That's great. Well, whatever helps so her sweet. get through, right? <laughs> <laughs> get through and that's been, a, it's been the most wonderful five years. I remember you guys had that awesome car that picked you up. And everything. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah I forgot cool. about that. What did you have? Rolls Royce. Right? We rented like a Rolls Royce from the 40s, I believe, cool. that came and picked us up. That was fun. Had that cool-ass bar mm-hmm. inside the Green Pastures. Mm-hmm. That was really cool, and I think that place is haunted, right? Yeah, super I haunted. I think so, yeah. And they got all those peacocks roaming on the ground as well. No. Well, peacocks are pretty scary. I mean, I think that you would probably, if you could hear a peacock and think there was like a banshee yeah, outside. Yeah, that's true. Hasn't Supernatural converted you yet? No, it hasn't. Are I actually stopped. I, have, I haven't watched, no. no. Oh. I just it's haven't watched much show. TV lately. I've been playing Dead Rising 2. So. How, do you, how do you like it? I like it. I like it. I don't like the fact that I finished the entire campaign and I only have a quarter of the achievements. Yeah, yeah. That's wrong. That's one of the standards that we it's should work up. on to present to the industry for I how agree. to handle their how, achievements. What percentage, the, what percentage should you be done? Beating the game. Ideally, first off. At least 50%. No, it's more than that. Yeah. Ideally, 
there's no multiplayer achievements. There mm-hmm. should be there should uh, be zero I, multiplayer achievements. I'm on board. Off. You beating, I agree. beating a game should net you sixty percent of the achievements. I would say that beating the game on the highest difficulty should probably net you seventy five. I'll go with that. Sure, yeah. I'd say fifty for a lower difficulty, but I can see seventy five for the Carrie highest. Carrie silently agrees. There, there, he carries over here nodding. There's no actual difficulty in Dead Rising, but you can get different endings depending on how well you do during the game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So if get you an get a that through E or whatever, an S, I think is the, yeah, the S final is the best. one. It is a Capcom game. Yeah. And if you get that final ending, then you should get seventy five percent of the achievements. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Griffin looks bored. Oh, I'm sorry. We haven't talked about video games all weekend. Yeah, with me. that was my all weekend. <laughs> really? I was a sounding board for video game stuff. So what's it like to be at a triathlon? Oops, at a triathlon watching other people compete at the highest level of physical endurance. In and the you're world. talking about video games. Like, it, yeah, there's like a... Dude, that's no fucking joke. First like, off, my thumb would be tired if I was doing this. It's a two and a half mile swim. <laughs> Wait, before we get away from this, one more question about achievements. Should you get achievements for co-op stuff? Yes. Okay, so that I, doesn't I count so. as... You're talking about competitive multiplayer. Yeah, okay. competitive multiplayer. Yeah, competitive multiplayer. All right. Uh, first off... This is Ironman bullshit. It's a two and a half mile swim, then a hundred and twelve mile bike ride, then a marathon, which is twenty six point two miles. Wow! Mm-hmm. In one day, in ninety five degree weather, yes. and our friend did it in eleven hours and fifty minutes. That's crazy. Blind. Blind. Yeah. yeah. Tethered to other human beings. She's, she's legally blind. blind. She's she legally had, blind. Uh, she had two guides. Like her, her guide dropped out kind of like at the last. Three weeks minute. before. Again. Again. Yeah, and so she had she met, met the girls who ran with her and um, did the rest of it with her um, like Thursday. Is it just one guide that has to do the entire thing with her, or do, do it, they swap it, it out? It doesn't matter. It d- doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. No, like you can have one guide. Was because that's crazy if they have to do it as well. Sometimes, it, 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 like yeah. she was supposed to have one guide, but because her guide fell through, she found new guides on literally on Thursday. These or two she girls met from, them on Thursday from like, Colorado, yeah. and then they wow. did, one did the swimming and the run, the other did the. No bike one did the bike. Ride. Is it a, a bike tandem bike? bike? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a very special tandem mm-hmm. bike. But, she has uh, to haul everywhere with her when she just does these things. Not so. only did she, the first time she did the uh, Iron Man, she did it in fourteen hours and thirty six minutes, which is really good. This is her second. A year later, she did eleven fifty. Not only did she break her record, not only did she break the blind woman record, she broke the, the blind men record by fifty five minutes. Oh, yeah. wow. So she's now the fastest person ever. Her fastest ideal time, she ever. was like, I would be tremendously happy if I made twelve hours and she did it in eleven fifty minutes. That's that's wow. amazing. And she yeah. told me an awesome story. Uh, actually, one of the girl that ran with her told me the story. That's crazy, because she's not. She's very like, I don't know. She's not a, a braggy kind of person mm-hmm. in the least at all. But uh, apparently, there's a phenomenon where men in triathlons and Ironman competitions do not like to be passed by women or blind women. And on the run, <laughs> I guess there were four or five incidents where she, where they passed a guy. And the guy started crying like when he saw that he was being passed by a blind woman. Wow. Like, started sobbing. And yeah. like couldn't control himself. Shit happened four or five times. Like, are they still yeah. running? Or yeah, they're running. Like, running is it going to someone swimming? They're like, running, they go, like... water in my eyes. Because, <laughs> you know, you're, like, 18 miles in. You've been going for, like, 10, 11 hours. And then you get passed by a blind girl, which I guess is a blow to Your macho ego. ego. Yeah. And he said that these guys would just be, like, sobbing and, like, snot and tears running down their face. Wow. Because they couldn't, they couldn't deal with the fact that a blind girl was faster than them. I mean, I, I listen. I mean, I, those people train for years and years. I mean, it seems like anybody passes you at any point. You don't know. She, uh, yeah, she trains for thirty-five hours a week. I just think maybe it's that's a, that's a full-time yeah. job. Yeah, it is. she also has a full-time job. Oh my yeah. god, um, she's an engineer. Does she ever sleep? Well, she's yeah, engineer at Microsoft, and then she does these things too. Yeah, her day. I was asking her about her day. Her day starts at five, and then it doesn't end until nine. Wow. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, we got to take a quick break. It's fascinating. Okay. We'll come back. To it. <laughs> but uh, we'll take a quick break. Uh, watch this animated adventure, and we'll be right back. You know, that's half the reason I had a kid, <laughs> was so I could feed her misinformation. I was trying to get Millie to go to the bathroom, but she didn't want to go. And I asked her if she liked bears, and she was like, yeah, of course I like bears. And I was like, well, bears eat poop, and bears live in the toilet, so <laughs> oh, you need what? to feed the bears. <laughs> Why did you do that? Or are you going to starve? <laughs> Why did you do that? I don't know, it just seemed like a good <laughs> idea at the time. A a bear <laughs> so bear is waiting for her to sit down and come out and eat? <laughs> oh, I, I, man, you're an idiot. <laughs> I'm pretty sure my mother had a kid just for the indentured servitude. Like, I'd get home from school at 2.30. I had to call my mom, and she would give me the list of, like, seven hours of chores I had to do that day. That was her way of keeping me out of trouble. And so it was, like, clean out the rain gutters, cut the grass, repaint the living room. I just painted it last week, painted it again. You sure it wasn't, like, to build skills? Like, maybe she's, like, Mr. Miyagi. She's like, show me, clean the gutter. <laughs> she throws a dragon strike Like, one day it's all going to come together for me. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be attacked by I'm a gonna... guy covered in leaves. You'll be I know this. <laughs> Somebody's going to assassinate the president. My mom's going to be like, fold the towel. <laughs> Maybe I'm a sleeper agent and I don't even know it. <laughs> Maybe you missed your calling. <laughs> Welcome back. 
You look really different, Bernie. I know. Look You've at me. Changed. I have changed. I am no longer Bernie Burns. Oh, you motherfucker. You drank the beer I wanted. Did you? I was uh, about to grab Jeff, it. Jeff gave me this one. Sorry. He just said he wanted a beer. I didn't know you guys were... I'm I, sorry. I told you in the first we're segment. We're trying to avoid any more of this. So, well, there's pa- other kinds of beers. Pass, you me, pass me one. Here. How about the Guinness? Ooh. Sure. Why not? Can you... I can't drink Guinness. Guinness has that weird like thing it. inside of it, right? You know what, though? Anything's better than that. Yeah. No, it's well, true. No, it, has, it has something inside yeah, of it, Yeah, it's got right? the, yeah. the ball that, no, that stirs it up. Gus and, I, like I was crazy. Gus and I had a Guinness experience okay. where we can't drink Guinness anymore. We used to both love Guinness, and we had this friend named Robert. We've probably talked about him on the podcast before. We've never he said his name. the best drinker either of us has ever met. The, like, what, the what, what do you best, mean by best drinker, drinker on the planet. Drinker. Okay, one night we were hanging out at our house. This is back when we lived, and Gus and I lived together. He and his buddy Adam came over, uh, who was the second best drinker I've ever met. <laughs> they came over, and they each bought... A 24 pack. No. They had a fifth of Jack each in their hand. They had each had oh. a fifth of Jack, brand new. And they also bought a 24 pack of Miller Lite each. And they wanted to see if they could each drink a 24 pack of Miller Lite and a fifth of Jack by themselves. And so they had a competition to do that it. That night? And yeah. they did it. They in one it. night. And did anyone get Jesus alcohol poisoning? Nope. No, they were fine. I mean, they were fine. No, honestly, it was, a, it was a little different. That's the gist of the story. They showed up with the fifth of Jack. Uh-huh. We were like, what are you doing? They're like, we've never drank a fifth of Jack before in one night. We're going to see if we can do it. Like, okay. They both pounded it and finished it. And then they were getting ready to leave. Like, oh, you're taking off? Like, no, we still want to drink more. We're going to go buy some beer. Yeah. They I mean, showed they up with, with a suitcase of that uh, Milwaukee's Best, wasn't it? Yeah, it was oh. the Beast. That's right. And, uh, and they were like, oh, we're just going to... Sp-. I was like, oh, did you bring that for us? Like, no, we're going to split it. That's, like, they yeah. showed up with a 24-pack. <laughs> Dude, they were amazing. That's they were a, like heroes. This is like we worked with Robert, and uh, when he would show up to work, if he had to work in the morning, when he would show up, yeah. he would take calls from under his desk. Like you would never <laughs> see him. Just when his phone rang, you'd see his hand come out above the desk, and he'd like hit the answer call button. He would bring a baseball cap and pull it down over his eyes and lay down. Yeah, and you'd just see his hand pop up every once in a while and hit the answer button. And then the dude was awesome. Great tech. <laughs> yeah, he was really good. He's great one, of the, he's one of the senior techs. We're just, but anyway, the reason I can't drink Guinness anymore is because he took his drinking one night and he made us drink seven Irish car bombs Ooh. in a span of ten minutes. We'd never had one. He's like, you never yeah. had one. All right, let's order a bunch. Oh, Irish car bombs are awesome. They're great until you have seven in ten minutes. Well, What's you don't it? do it's that. It's mixed with liquor, right? Yeah. What is it? It's, uh, it's You take a Guinness and you put a, a pint shot of, of Guinness. Jameson. Jameson and Bailey's, I think. Yeah, like Bailey's Irish cream. It tastes like chocolate milk if it's done right. You, like, you really drop good. the shot into the glass of Guinness yeah. and then you drink it real fast. I like everything about that except for the Bailey's. It, it tastes it's like actually, well, you, it's right. actually pounded down real fast. It it's actually like really chocolate good. Chocolate milk. It or tastes something. like it tastes good. I'm surprised that you guys because like, I don't like you don't Bailey's. Like that kind of thing at all, do you? No. Well, well I was I was like 22 or 23 at the time. That's true. You know, it's yeah. funny. You bought me a whole bottle of Jägermeister recently. And oh. Just for fun. It's I don't know. like why would you do that? Because she loves Jägermeister. I used to, but that's the thing. It's like oh. when I was 19, it was like, oh, I love Jägermeister. But <laughs> when you were 19, yeah, okay. no, I can drink Jägermeister if I have Happy Colas. You know the gummies. Like oh, the right, Haribo yeah. Happy Colas. That's the only way to drink Jägermeister if you have like a handful of those. Or, we, or if it's mixed with Red Bull. That's about the only way well, to I've, drink when it. I, in Germany, they mix it. I used to live actually in the town where it was invented in Braunsch- Braunschweig. I can't say it. What was that word again? Braunschweig. <laughs> okay. Need a clear your throat? <laughs> Braunschweig. I used okay. to be a nanny there. Um, and that was where it was invented, but they ended up, the plant is actually just south of there and like called like, not Würzburg, but something like that. Um, where they, because it was cheaper property. Anyway, they, they have it there, and they had an American football team in Germany, and I used to go and see the American football team play, which is a bunch of Americans who didn't make it into real teams. Yeah, yeah. Was it the World Football Germany. League or whatever? They were, they were so cocky about their status there, so they'd strut around, you know, Germany. Even though no one cared, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. No, it was like a big thing there. Really? Yeah, and they were actually a really good team. Hmm. But they would come out, and they were like totally decked out. Their whole uniform was like Jägermeister. Like oh, that's kind of cool. And Jägermeister was the sponsor, and so they would have Jägermeister at the games, and they'd mix it with Coke because it was like Jägermeister and Coke, and that's like all get, you drank at the games. I want one of those jerseys. Yeah, you it was pretty awesome. Sure, you can find it on eBay, right? Probably. It's like yeah. bright orange and black. It was like the, that sounds awesome. Those are your colors. Do you remember Absolutely. any of those orange NFL teams? I remember San Antonio had one, the Riders there was, or the remember, Wranglers. There was one called the Dragons. I Wait, think. is that my XFL? World football, no, world oh, football, pre XFL. This um, was back in the late '80s, early '90s. Early, early '90s. Okay. Yeah. I remember XFL. Like XFL, people can, like give it a lot of crap, but it actually, it was a pretty cool idea. XFL lasted for one year. Yeah, one, one season. season. Yeah. Do you remember the one uh, from the early days? I used to live in Jacksonville, Florida, when I was a kid, and we had a was the USFL. Was that what it was called? Uh, I know there was another it one. Was the it, one? It was like a spinoff of the CFL, wasn't there? For that's, a while? That's Canadian. No, it's Canadian. It was the one where uh, what's his face went to. Um, yeah, I know what you're talking about. I don't remember what it was called. What's that guy's name? Kurt Warner. No, uh, Herschel Walker, where Her- Herschel Walker went. Oh, Instead really? Instead of going into the NFL. Oh. He went into the – and then they went belly up, and he had to go back into the NFL, and he had already kind of 
Hmm. It's, he'd already kind of blown it at that point. I'm already yeah. sorry I brought this up. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> Can sorry. we get back to drinking? Talking about yeah. sports. You brought up sports out of all of us. I know. You know Who would be the it least was, likely uh, to bring up sports? I'm pretty sure. Do you remember that TV show First and Ten on HBO? No. Oh, God. Is it, it, like was a, it was an hour-long drama, com, like, com you drama dramedy. <laughs> com you uh, drama? <laughs> it was a communist <laughs> drama? It came, it came from yeah, it was, about, it was a communist drama. about. Uh, uh, it had uh, Shannon... Teague in it? Share it. There was like she was like that hot no memory Playboy. Yeah, lady you haven't you haven't made one statement that sounds. She uh, <laughs> anyway. It was about it was about that. T- it was about that, uh, league? that league and one of the teams. And uh, every episode she would show her boobs. Nice. And Sounds that awesome. I want to watch it now. Yeah, it was great. Like, it was after, like the, after the credits would roll, like, it was cut like her and she'd flash <laughs> around that era of like not necessarily the news mm-hmm. and Dream On and oh, all those. Gosh, I know all those shows. Yeah, yeah. It was the same time. It was a big deal back in '87. Speaking of, of boobs, was later, yeah. Speaking of boobs, you were telling me you just said earlier you're going to leave me for this hostess at the sports bar. Uh, wait, which, I, sport, which sports I bar? I want to remind you in the Woodlands. Oh, that okay. I, I yeah. Oh god, he fell in love. Did he? And he's still talking about it. Wow. She was very cute, but I told you I'm like, okay, yeah, work it out, do it. I want to see this happen. And <laughs> you were just I'll like, pass. can I get another drink, please? Like, I can't. Down I can't. Little. I can't <laughs> throw my moves out on a fine lady in front of you and her daughter. <laughs> What am I gonna do? Like it is challenging when you bring your kid along. Like this is my daughter. She's cute, right? I could do that again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm capable of that twice. You want one that looks like you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I can. I can. I can. I can make one in, in your likeness. I make them custom. I make them custom. Right. <laughs> it's a custom build. Takes about nine months. <laughs> custom. <laughs> just put in your order no, right I'm now. No, I dare you. I dare you. Oh, Work so you got dared. Is that a good move, like bringing up pregnancy on, like when you're trying to hit on? According a woman? to Brandon, it is. Brandon's it is. philosophy is get that a, shit pregnant. You gotta wow. find, you gotta find a girl really, at, at the age ready to have kids and wanting kids. It's not an issue of you know that'll woo her. It's you know she's stuck at that point. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> what is she I gonna gotcha. do? <laughs> nice. Uh, I'll tell you what she's gonna do. She's gonna take half of your money and go meet a new guy. Yeah. <laughs> and then and then take half your money for the next eighteen years. Yeah. yeah. Have fun it's with that. Half, by the way. Oh whatever. Come on. Well, a lot. I'm sure. Yeah. And Brandon doesn't have very much, so that's true. Thank yeah, you. so you won't lose much. Yeah. That's true. That's a good point. <laughs> yeah. Now's the time to do it. <laughs> it's like when we talked about committing crimes before you're 18. Right. That's yeah. true. Yeah, yeah. You, got, you got a strike while you got opportunity. Yeah. Anyway, Bad advice. watching like that sports bar was one of those like uh, Hooter esque places where the girls have to wear like they had to wear like uh, referee outfits to enhance mm-hmm. to show off a- attributes. Their mm-hmm. hands. Hey, their hands. Their giant hands. And uh, watching my. I discovered that my wife, I she's like a lecherous bird of prey, or like a. So we had this whole conversation of what That's what the sweet. sleaziest. That's so sweet of you to say. What the sleaziest bird of prey is? We decided it's a falcon. So, falcon? Yeah. No, no. I think oh, a hawk. I, we I decided it's a hawk. You, because falcon is so, pseudo majestic, and that's terrible because that's that's for dead things. I think a hawk's more majestic than a falcon. I think an eagle. I consider myself an eagle. There's nothing majestic about watching <laughs> you stare at women's boobs. <laughs> I know. I will say that this is the problem with being a girl. I think I'm way less careful about, and I should know better about staring at women's breasts, but I don't have the training that guys have as far as like the mental mm-hmm. photography. Yeah, like you, you, take, you take a picture. And, and you, I, I, mind, I, I criticize guys all the time, but I'm, I'm sure I'm awful because I don't even, I guess as a girl, sometimes you don't think things apply to you. The funny thing is, yeah. I, I like, went with your wife to one of those types of sports bars once before, and you seemed put out and very uncomfortable the whole time you were there. No, the beer was great. <laughs> no, the, no, here's the thing. We got the worst waitress in the world, and she had one of those voices that's like super oh, high right, pitched. Yeah. And for some reason, girls with really high pitched voices always get excited about things. <laughs> You know, it's, not, it's obnoxious. I can't stand it. It's like if you have that voice, you got to be like, oh, my God, like this all the time. Sorry, I don't want to. Do you I'm not going to do that yeah. voice anymore. <laughs> well, that explains it. Anyway, if anybody else out there knows a sleazier bird of prey. That yeah, we would love to hear what, it. I would love to hear it. How did you come up with the falcon or the hawk or whatever it was? Well, uh, he we, accused me of being a vulture, and I'm like, no, no, no. Vultures aren't, like, they're not. They're scavengers. Pre- pre- they, they, yeah, pick they're scavengers. The, they pick off the weak. So yeah, Griffin yeah. is no, like. No, they don't. They just go and eat dead things, and, like, they're clean well, up birds. super weak. We agree. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's weaker than a dead body. Zero strength. Here, here's the deal. It's a, it's a limited palette to choose from. Like, we were talking about this with our friend Patricia on the drive back, the Iron Man. And uh, she's definitely a bird of prey, Griffin. But she's definitely sleazy. So, like, there's, there, she's not an eagle. There's no way. Mm-mm. Eagles are, are gorgeous and majestic. Well, I'm, not that you're not gorgeous. You're gorgeous. But you're just, you're, you're very lecherous. You're like, if you had a mustache that could twirl, well, <laughs> you're, think it, I'd would, be that kind of it would apply. So, oh. there's like, the, the owl doesn't work at no. all. No. Too wise. So, then you've got, you're left with a falcon or a hawk. And falcons, I don't know. Blue Falcon was a great superhero if you watched that cartoon <laughs> when you were a kid. 
And, I think uh, we so, just should have like, decided a hawk is the sleaziest of the predatory bird. Yeah, predator so birds. we decided to go with hawk. Hmm. But I, I mean, I feel like there's probably another bird of prey out there that we're not thinking of. It's interesting. I don't know. It's it an interesting conversation. I don't it's know. It's not that, that interesting. I don't know that anyone's ever had that conversation uh, ever in the history of the world. Before. I'm sure there are people in the podcast watching or listening to the podcast that are far s- smarter about birds of prey that can, like, they're like, no, it's an ossuary. She's an ossuary. Although I don't think an ossuary is a bird of prey. What the fuck is? I haven't even heard of that. It's a velociraptor. I don't know. Ossuary. <laughs> uh, is cas- that a cassowary? Is that what it's called? Mm-hmm. Yeah, cassowary. It's kind of like a ostrich. Yeah, well, that's Cassowary. not a bird of prey, though, is it? <laughs> no, it's not. But I'm saying that there's that'd some be, bird out there that we're not thinking of. That would be terrifying if ostriches yeah. were like yeah. birds of prey. Uh, yeah, like ostriches if, if they attack, just like going after you. <laughs> if they're like that velociraptors from Jurassic Park, like they come at you with their. <laughs> Did you? Uh, if you're looking at one, they'll attack from the side. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that picture on Reddit the other day of the, uh, uh, what is that thing called? Alpaca that was shaved. Oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. My that's God. Fucking funny. So cute. We should get. There's nothing cute about it. Do you want to get one? Ridiculous. I wanted to steal a bunch of I've seen so many. I've seen so many videos of alpacas like spitting on people and trying yeah. to fuck them up. I'm not. I wouldn't. I wouldn't even get close to one. Uh-uh. No. No. Can I, let me ask you this. this: is another thing we talked about over the weekend while we were not running, because uh-huh. um, we had a lot of time to kill just sitting there and watch other, watching other people, watching other people being shaped. Yeah. Um, what kind of old person do you think you're going to be? You remember the like, uh, Mega sixty four video we did when I was old? I think mm-hmm. I'll be like that. Just like. like miserable yeah. and like on an oxygen tank oxygen tank like you'll, you'll have to have a hobby like every old person yeah. has to have some way to pass the time until you die right mm-hmm. so what 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 kind of like what is your focus going to be are you going to be into fishing or <sighs> like we saw this fucking stupid sunday morning talk show like like the sun, whatever the sunday morning version of it, it, like 60 minutes is where they have like fluff pieces mm-hmm. mixed with real news and it was about all these old people in Boca Raton that have golf carts to move around their golf cart community uh-huh. and they get souped up to look like Mustangs yeah. and some classic <laughs> and, like, yeah. and then they have like they have like car shows where they all hang out in a parking lot and show off their like Humvee or their yeah. I don't know whatever. Like golf cart with flames on the side or whatever. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. And then it's not like, as it, it is like, awesome. One would be awesome. Like some guy who just had a crazy golf cart would be awesome. But a whole community of people with like trying to outdo each other not, with golf man? carts. Oh yeah. Know, like, you got nothing else to do. Might as well see you know, a golf you know, cart. When I'm old, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna I, I think I know what my hobby's gonna be. What's that? Doing drugs. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. Because at that point you don't give a fuck. You're gonna die anyway. I'm gonna to become a heroin addict. Or or if I get to seventy I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, dude, I'm gonna do. Or you can even just sell, sell drugs, man. Because at that point, like, what are you gonna do? <laughs> you'll you'll get. Dead no anyway. one will suspect you. You'll get. You'll have. That's a brilliant idea, and I'll tell you why. Because you'll get the Iggy Pop effect. You'll embalm yourself. True. <laughs> and you'll point. live. You'll probably live to be 140 and have a six pack while you do it. Mm-hmm. You so I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, do I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do yes. heroin and bang hookers. You'll yes. double you your go. life. More yeah. great advice brought to you by the drunk tank. There you go. No, I think, I think, I don't know. I kind of want to do, like, do the boating thing when I get old. Like, yeah. just get a boat and go down to the Caribbean. That'd be awesome. I know? think I think I might be a fisher. I yeah. think I might get into fishing. I think by the time we're old, the oceans are going to be gone. Probably. So, I don't know. <laughs> Jeff, or, or it'll be no, like it'll be all world. ocean. It's like yeah. water world. Yeah. <laughs> it'll, be like, it'll be oil instead of ocean. That's true. That's true. It'll Jeff, be... uh, um, shit, what were you saying? You want to get into boat? You said you want to get into fishing. He's like... I just, you know, I've been, I work really hard. Like, I just want to sit. And I'm like, that's all you do. I mean, you work hard, <laughs> but, like, you sit anyway. He's like, no, but I want my brain to sit, too. If I can get my body and my brain to both sit, that's what I want. Like, yeah. I want my brain, I wow. want my brain to sit for a while. I'm sick of thinking. It's exhausting. Well, you don't think you should get, like, a lazy boy belt for your head. Or you should, like, yeah. Oh. Don't you think that there, there's some thought involved in fishing? No, that's the whole point of fishing. No, there's really you, no you thought. You bait the hook, throw it there's in the no water. There's no strategy. And then you, you drink oh, seven beers, and then you check on the bait. And it's gone, and you don't know how it's gone, but you also realize you had seven beers in the span of 15 minutes, so you probably didn't notice a lot of stuff, and then you do it again. And then you realize who's driving the boat. Oh, God. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Maybe you guys can be a duo. You'll be the boating guy, and you'll be all- there we go. Yeah, back. There you go. You'll, you'll get in the skipper. And then you try to figure out if there's a fishing version or like a boating version of AAA yeah. <laughs> that can come <laughs> rescue you. A <laughs> towboat. <laughs> then you realize the whole time we're just sitting on the trailer and you're just <laughs> fishing off the side trying to get squirrels or something. <sighs> there you go. That sounds I, like fun. Let's do it. I'm gonna get, right. I'm gonna be a bird lady. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna get lots of birds. Oh, oh my gosh. My uh, my grandmother's a bird lady. I love it. She That's ha- me. She has like my grandmother has I think like forty chickens and probably like fifty or sixty pigeons. I want parrots. Mm. Or at least one. I really want an African grey, but I know that I'm not responsible enough yet. And we have cats and if you're gonna have birds you have to let them roam. Is this the grand Mother that cuts the grass with scissors, no, or the one that puts eggs in, oh, shit. like fixes you with egg. Is no. your grandmother yeah. actually? Is it Curandera? What? Yeah. How do you say it? Yeah, she actually is. She was. Was? Is she she's not alive anymore? No, she is. She is. She doesn't do that anymore, though. Can you explain that? Because that's really interesting to me. It's so it's healing. It's, it's like 
folk healing kind of mm-hmm. or like spiritual folk healing in Mexican culture. Has it ever worked on you? Um, I don't think she's ever done it to me. Maybe once when I was a little kid. Yeah. But I don't really What this know is much is like it. if you're sick, they'll put an egg in a glass well, next to your that's bed. That's one one thing. And one then when thing. you wake up, the egg has stolen your illness. Oh, it's that's like it's it. black and so stuff. So the egg yeah. has the flu. I've seen yeah. that before. But it's that's... like those guys who like reach into your body and pull out yeah. the bad crap basically. Right. Like that. Okay. So she that's I thought was that the trick to get rid of the evil eye? Um, uh, I don't know. So the evil eye that you can now I had this happen to me, especially when I had Millie. Um, every time I oh, would take man, yeah. Millie out, anytime um, like uh, like a woman would come in and see <laughs> Millicent, and she would be like, "Your daughter's so beautiful," and she would touch Millie, and she would touch me. Like anytime like there's a compliment given, you have to mm-hmm. touch somebody so you don't give them the evil eye. It's not right? evil eye. It's different. What is it? It's envy. Envy. Mm. So it's different than evil eye. Yeah, evil eye is like you intentionally wishing malice on someone. Oh, okay, because that seems okay. Yeah. Envy's like but you, she you, said, you. She envy's, said Oho or whatever. She's yeah, like, Oho. It's eye. God's eye, right? Or Oho's or eye. Just eye. Yeah. But that's evil eye. Oho. Uh, it eye. can Mal-oho. be, but it means it means just eye. But depending on the context, it can mean. So evil can it eye. be envy too? That yeah, Oho could. can be envy. Okay, so that's what she said. Yeah. So but it, I see. Yeah, we, when we would take Millie to the grocery store, especially the Fiesta when she was a baby, like all the time, women would come up and be like, "You've got such a beautiful daughter." Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, just to make sure <laughs> nothing bad happened. Yeah. Like, um. Thank you. <laughs> It's interesting. But I find that in general, people feel really comfortable, especially if you're pregnant. They feel like your body, they can give you all the advice in the world unasked, even if they don't have kids. Mm-hmm. And they can touch your belly if they want to without asking. They're like, oh, public property. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> well, it's so big, it's impossible not to, right? It's like, oh, yeah. shit. It's like gravitational pull. Yeah. With people's hands. Did you guys see the picture on Reddit the, uh, yesterday that showed, uh, it was a picture of Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt and then the four kids all standing next to each other. And then below it, it was like 2010, uh, Brad Pitt family. And then it was like 2021, and it was the Black Eyed Peas. <laughs> and they all corresponded perfectly. Oh, really? <laughs> and they were like, obviously, uh, the Pitts invented a time machine and sent their kids back to, uh, awesome. to rule the world. It was really funny. You should I didn't, find I didn't see that. That's I don't funny. know why it just popped into my head. It was very clever. Man. Did you guys talk about the rapture at all? Yeah, we did a little yeah, bit. Yeah, we did a little bit. No. Not like did you have something really no. funny to add? Were you, no. Were no, you no. waiting You were holding on to some jokes? I, I, was, I wasn't holding on. I was like, yeah. <laughs> I went to the draft house on Saturday, so I was like, yeah, if I'm going to go out, might as well go to the draft <laughs> which, house which one draft last house time. Which draft house did you go to? Uh, Southmore. Nice. Yeah. Well, where we'll have our, we, saw, we saw Pirates. How was it? It was It was okay. It, it wasn't, I mean, it was, it's not a great movie. It, was, it wasn't a terrible movie. It was kind of like popcorn fluff, so. Didn't, yeah. it, uh, didn't do as well. It didn't break 100 million. Right? It's the first, really? Yeah, it's the first one who hasn't hasn't broken 100 million. But it's million. still the highest grossing movie of the year so far. Is it? Weekend. Yeah. Oh, wow. It beat out well, Fast the, the, sum, the summer season just started. Yeah, it's true. It, but, like, I think next week it officially starts. Memorial Day is the official start. I guess the summer so. Movie. What, what, what's, the, what's the first big Memorial Day movie? Or what's the first big movie this summer? Hangover 2 comes out next week, I know. Yeah, and a Green Lantern and Captain America are coming. Bridesmaids Her- is out already, right? Yeah, yeah I want to see that. I really want to see it's it, not too. playing at a theater. I want to see it at. It's at the South Mall. Is that a deal breaker for you? Will you not go to it like yeah. straight to another theater? Yeah. No? Yeah, I, I don't know. I, like, it's not at the Gold Class, so I'm not going to see it. I'll wait till it comes out. You won't see it at Alamo? You want to see it at Alamo? No, too crowded. I don't want to show up that early. Yeah. No, so, okay, so, about- so here's my argument about the Gold Class. Like, people say, oh, let's go to the Gold Class. We all live south. So it's like driving to the Gold Class, that's like adding on an extra 45 you minutes to an hour. Yeah, from my house to the domain, <laughs> it takes literally 10 minutes. So really? Yeah. Yeah, it's just like we're right there. Like, like I get on thirty five real easy and just ride up. Yeah. And then well, it's we're like there. people like I don't well, think a lot. Of, we yeah, a lot of the know. company lives north. Like um, Chris and Marshall have to drive like way the fuck in from North Austin. Yeah, but oh, nobody right? cares about Chris. And That's true. They don't. No really one count. cares about you. Do you hear that? <laughs> <laughs> got Marshall on camera today. <laughs> uh, we also got like a gold, a new theater. At Second Street called the. Uh, oh, um, oh yeah, that's not open yet. Beer and it's open. It's open. Wait, wait. It's called. Something in Blue, Flicks. Cr- the it's called Violet, Crown? And Violet Crown Cinema. Our friend is well, making the signs. I'm thinking of completely different. It's a new, it's a new like independent theater in Austin. Okay. It's like a what? mix between the Alamo and the Gold Class. But we the, were actually the theaters well, only have 50 seats. We considered it for RTX, but the the theaters are way too small. Yeah, we couldn't do it. Well, we got to take a quick break. I'd love to hear more about the theater, but uh, <laughs> we'll there's right nothing back. more to tell you. That was it. Uh, what well, are you gonna tell me? We'll be right back. <laughs> We are unsympathetic. If we're sitting next to somebody on a plane, and they're like, I'm a very nervous flyer, we go, well, don't worry, we fly all the time. And then as soon as we're going to take off, I'll turn to Jeff and I'll say casually, yeah, we're not going fast enough to take off. <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, if there's a noise on the plane, they go, whoa. That's, that's not right. <laughs> what was that? And we were talking, and we asked what the average British person's view of Americans is. You said fat, loud, and obnoxious. And Griffin and I were like, well, obviously you can see that that's not the case. And on cue, a speedboat pulled up with three drunk, fat dudes 
with no shirts on, and some crazy redneck lady comes running up behind us with a case of beer in her hands and goes, I got the beer! <laughs> Fuck! And that's awesome. Yeah, if totally. you like to do this. Thing. What? It's with the fucking phone! Throw it out of the goddamn office! Here, I'll take the battery out of it. Don't take the battery! Just get rid of it! Turn off the fucking ringer! You don't have to invent a time machine go. and go back and kill Alexander <laughs> Graham Bell! Just fucking turn off the goddamn phone! Look at these hands. These hands are fucking smooth as balls, alright? <laughs> we go down there, the car's been egged. <laughs> It had an omelet on it. <laughs> so bad. It's like my car was sunny side up. <laughs> but was it just your car? Like yeah, you know, my car. someone had gone and bought eggs to put on your car. Yeah. Now why do you think they egged your car? Probably has been sitting there for three weeks. <laughs> I, I moved it from one side of the street to the other once. But, okay, uh, apparently that wasn't uh, enough to so, save off an egging. Welcome back. Hey, Hi. Bernie, you still look different. Thank you. Yeah, I'm still very different. <laughs> I feel younger. <laughs> <laughs> well, you look terrible. Oh, man. So we went and saw Pirates this weekend. We, uh -huh. we talked about it before. One thing that really bugged the hell out of me, we saw it in 3D, which I, I'm not a huge fan of 3D. Really? Yeah. What is it you don't like about 3D? Because I, I, gla I have glasses. I hate 3D. So I, is I have it, glasses, so you have to put glasses it. on top. Is it it's purely, not that bad, but I need it for movies. Is it purely but. because of the glasses that it's you It's really uncomfortable. Like it? Really? Yeah. It, it, is, it is very uncomfortable. They should get the little clips like from the 80s. Like That's that. what I say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> little screens that go you on should, top. You should manufacture. You should make a fucking fortune. I, look, I've said that. Can't you buy your own? They're, and, it's different depending on what movie you watch. Really? Yeah. There's different different formats. Oh, okay. Because I feel like every time I see a 3D movie, it says real D. Glasses? Yeah, there's that's, like, that's the majority there's, of there's them. There's three, I think there's three different standards. There's the IMAX 3D standard, there's the Real D standard, there's and an, there's also there's another um, one. I don't remember what the other one is, but there is a third. But, but let's be honest, we always go to the same theater. If we can. Like, we always try to go to Alamo South Lamar or Gold Class if we're mm -hmm. feeling, you know, decadent. <laughs> so, like, you could will it down to those two, probably. I guess so. Uh, but I think Alamo is all real 3D, but, yeah. but the thing about the 3D, especially in, in the Pirates movie, is like, everything took place at night or a lot of the stuff took place at night and it felt very foggy. It was like, yeah. like the whole screen was milky and I don't know if that was because of the 3D or what. Well, but. There was an interesting article I saw that uh, someone retweeted last night talking about how most major theater chains in the U.S. will not swap out lenses between 3D and 2D movies. So if they leave the 3D lens on in a 2D movie that it robs brightness from the movie. Oh, like yeah, your movie yeah. will show up like 60% Darker, yeah, because I guess technically 3D movies are like two different right. screens, so they have to be extra bright or right. whatever. And that so. the company policy at most of these theaters, I think it was uh, Regal and AMC, the company policy is the projectionists are not allowed to switch out the lenses. Why? The, the 16 year old kid. Because <laughs> if you open up, in particular, they said the Sony 4K projectors, if you open them and swap out the lens and you don't do it right, the projector shuts down because of DRM issues. But if it, things look worse, yeah. Without but they'd rather have it looking worse Hire than off. better people. I don't know. Like, what's no, the... Yeah. But it's a very expensive piece of technology, you know. They don't want it to get Hire. fucked you gotta, up. you got to hire yeah, seniors, not, not juniors, at the, <laughs> not sophomores. At the same time, those, still, those chains still, you know, don't keep those bulbs in the regular projectors lit or properly... Um, yeah. So it, you're still going to have shit, shitty image no matter what Yeah, in the at. article, uh, you even interviewed people after the movie, you know, you know, people who were in a bad movie where they know they had a 3D lens on a 2D movie and no one said anything about it. Dude, it, every, every, I think the overwhelming reaction was it's better than what I have at home. Now, see, that, yeah. that bugs the hell out of me. Like, but I, you spend I a fucking fortune on movies. But most people don't know. Most people hook up, buy an HDTV and hook up you know, yeah. a standard definition signal, and it's fucking 4.3 stretched out to a 16 by 9. Yeah. That's like, if you're in a business, don't you want to put the best thing no. for outcome? Did I tell you about the time I went home to my parents' house, and they were missing a color on their TV? Oh, yeah, I think you mentioned well, it in the podcast. Like, like the red was unplugged. And I was like, what are you doing? Get, like, this, <laughs> like, it had been like that for weeks, and they just didn't notice it. And I was like, are you kidding me? How do you... It's because uh, you notice the Coke cans looked weird. <laughs> yeah, it was, it, it was something like one I of thought the they were all drinking Coke gone. Zero. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't know. But the thing about the projection stuff is like some some projectionists are just lazy. Like I went to the Gold Class, which is the really expensive theater here mm -hmm. in Austin, and we we saw True Grit, and like the fourth or fifth reel in, the frame lapsed. So like the bottom of the frame was on the top mm -hmm. of the film, oh, God. Mm -hmm. and that's that's like a thirty five dollar ticket. And I'm like, what? How how is this not being fixed? And I hit my little button, and I waited like ten minutes, never got fixed. I finally had to leave the theater and go track down someone to be like, hey, your projection's fucked up. Yeah. And they finally actually like someone they sent someone up there to go fix it. And it's oh like, man, that, it's like how they would, didn't give you how, free nachos or anything. No, no, nothing. Speaking of it, it's like, terrible theater fuck ups. I went and saw for some reason I saw the. Do you remember the um? What movie was that? Um, 
when, when American Idol was big, Ke- Kelly, Ke- Kelly. Clarkson oh yeah, from Kelly to Justin. Or you whatever. saw that? From Justin to Kelly. From oh Justin my to Kelly. God. I saw it. Intentionally? <laughs> like me, like no, that, that was a huge theater <laughs> fuck up. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess because there were only three of us in the th- whole theater, they didn't feel the need to change it. But when they, the, the movie started, it was stretched. To where like Kelly looked like she took up like half the screen. So she, she looks like, like now. She was squatting. Like, nice. It was like future Kelly. And Justin was too. And then every time somebody would lay down on the beach, they would be like suddenly really long and skinny. What do you think Justin Guarini's doing right now? I don't know, but I'm getting to the story. Oh, I'm sorry, you get cashing the residuals. Point is, that movie's way better, so like way better like that. So we didn't have them change it, but it was. Yeah, it was so funny. Do you remember um, when you and I saw Spider Man Three? We saw the oh presser God. of Spider Man Three. They switched the fourth and the third reel, mm-hmm. and Gus and I were the only people in the theater to notice. And I'm including <laughs> Matt and Bernie. In yeah, that. we were. Yeah, we were like, what? What happened? Like, this, like this doesn't make sense. This is wrong. And Matt and Bernie are like, just shut up, just watch the movie. It's fine. And we're like, no, 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 no. no, no. So they're they're talking about like, stuff we didn't see. He's How evil. Is Why is he evil? <laughs> and he's like, no, no, no. It's fine. And then like ten minutes into the the switch, they go, uh, we're gonna send everybody out to the lobby. And then Matt and Bernie are like, Matt and Bernie were like, "That's weird." And we're like, "What is wrong?" With you? I didn't even know that this was backwards. <laughs> oh, well, you like show terrible. up in a black suit or something without being explained. I don't remember, yeah. but it was like it was like it was the, like the flipped up collar Peter Parker who was oh, all the, like the emo, uh, like, emo yeah. Yeah. Peter Parker, and he was just like on the phone, and we're like, "What the fuck just happened?" And we're looking at Matt and Bernie, and they're like, "It makes sense. Shut up." <laughs> yeah, and they actually they liked. It. I remember I well, you were there for that, right? Yeah, I don't remember that. I really don't remember that part, but I do remember that we weren't happy with the movie. Yeah, the yeah, three of us. We were the only ones. We were like, we went out to the lobby while they changed the reel. And everyone was like, oh, it's awesome. I was like, um, we were like, are we watching the same movie? The, something, yeah. Yeah. There's something's wrong here. Terrible. And, and the, everyone later was like, no, it was fine. I thought it was kind of fun that he was like, well, like when he goes to the club. When like, he does the saw, dancing. Like, yeah. And people were fine with that. Why? Like, I, I don't know. I, I liked <laughs> Lowell from Wings in there, though. He was pretty good. <laughs> One time. But then, uh, I was going to say, then after the movie was over, Matt and Bernie go, okay, so uh, it, turn, it turns out you guys were right. Uh, <laughs> it was a terrible film. <laughs> I don't know why it took us so long to realize it. <laughs> Movie, we watched that recently. The ending of that movie is yeah. so bad. I don't remember the ending. How did it, it, it was it, the, like okay, this you know spoiler for anyone who hasn't seen it, but it's like him standing <laughs> on that that gra- like the building that they had been fighting on, mm-hmm. and then the Sandman is like, "All right, peace," and is like leaves and yeah. just floats away, and then like he's like, "Didn't you just kill a whole bunch of people?" And he's like, "Peter Parker just let him go." Remember, and like Harry had to come fight with with Spider Man. Like, wow, no, I don't remember any of that. that stuff. Yeah, it was terrible. It was like the huge. It was like a, like a three way fight yeah. or something. Or no, it was it was, it was a Peter. It was Peter Parker and Harry Osborn fighting together against Sandman and Venom. Yeah, and there was the whole sound oh. thing with Venom, and they were trying to like hit the yeah hit the hit, fucking cross beams or whatever. Yeah, he yeah. was like running around and hitting them and yeah. scaring the thing off. Isn't they like terrible. vaporized it or God, it's so terrible. bad. Venom's such a cool character, and they really ruined so that. So terrible. Wait, which one, Sandman? Venom. No, Venom. Venom's Venom. an awesome character. So terrible. That was James Franco, right? Uh, no, no, that was. It uh, was the Peter uh, Parker in the black Spider-Man suit. That was the Venom kid, is the, the, the kid from the that seventy okay, show. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. I forget his name. Topher oh, Grace. Right. Topher, Topher Grace. Grace. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, he was good in that. I thought that. Bizarro, yeah, Bizarro, Bizarro Toby Maguire. Yeah, yeah. To, no, Topher Grace would have made a great Spider-Man actually. Like he would have been like he's kind of that smarmy jackass type guy. He would have mm-hmm. been funny, but instead they went with Toby Maguire. Was he like in the running or something early on? Or? I think he was actually. Oh. I think they talked about that. So well, me, that was a good, great casting because those two guys look so similar. Yeah, though. Yeah. So let me ask you a question, not to get off a seven-year-old Spider-Man movie, but did you miss Orlando Bloom or Keira Knightley at all in Pirates? Like, uh, was their absence felt? Not really. Orlando Bloom was kind of a throwaway character to me. Like, I mean, he was sort of the the main sort of drive of the, the first few movies, but I think you know Johnny Depp is the star of sure, the Pirates yeah. movies, and Penelope Cruz showed up, so I kind of forgot about Keira so Knightley. Do you think Penelope yeah. Cruz is hotter than yes. Keira Knightley? Oh hell yeah, Keira Knightley absolutely. Is very, There's no very, question. Very you have a racist no. dick if you say otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> no, Keira Knightley is beautiful. I absolutely agree with it, but I'm Penelope sorry. Cruz is a racist yeah. dick. Yeah. There's no way you, anyone could think Kira Knightley's hotter than she, I don't Cruz. consider her hot. Like she's very, she's so, she's like a board with a pretty face. Yeah. Like, she's like a porcelain doll that yeah, you find, but you recognize as attractive. But Kira Knightley was like no hotter than she was in Love Actually. Like that's that's I think the hottest Kira Knightley out there. I don't know. She was pretty hot in the pirate suit. Oh god, with the or tan. When, yeah. When she's like dressed as the like when she becomes the king of the pirate or whatever, like with the hat. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 That was pretty hot. Mm-hmm. She's also hot in the that Pride and Prejudice. <laughs> she kind of, sometimes when I see her, she kind of reminds me of Sasha Gray for some reason. Her face, the porn star Sasha yeah. Gray. Yeah, nice. that's nice. There's something about her face that makes me think of. Uh, Dirty. Who's your okay. biggest like, celebrity crush right now? Right now, uh, God, I don't know. I mean, like I have no, a time. No, no, right, right now, like right now, probably Penelope Cruz because <laughs> that's like Cruz. that's the thing that's most recently in my. How head. about you guys? What about you? I don't know if I can ask that right now off the top of my head. Right now, Penelope Cruz. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Griffin? Um, I'm really into. Oh, shit, I just forgot her name. 
Wow, you're clearly into no, her. No, you, you go, and then I'll go. Sophia Vergara. No, right, no, right now. now. Right now. <laughs> right now. <laughs> right now. I have, a, I have her picture in my mind. Right, <laughs> right now. What, what, what is Emmy she Rossum. Emmy Rossum. Emmy Rossum. Okay, that, I'm that one's good. way into Do you know who she is? Yes. I'm, I'm glad to hear. He didn't know who she was. Really? Yeah, but she's I, only been I like never two s- movies. She's, she's been in a few movies. Fucking... She's been in nothing, but she's oh on some God. show on Showtime now. She has an amazing I'm glad to hear you come around to Sophia Vergara, by the way. I never come around. I'm sick I'm sick of hearing you you and Bernie talk about how hot Phil's wife is in Modern Family. Claire Dunphy is super hot. Sophia Vergara is right there. Sophia Vergara is like maybe the hottest chick on the planet right yeah. now. Yeah. And I've yeah. always thought that. I've always thought she was hotter than Claire. But Claire is smoking hot. Claire's she really, right. no, she's I, well, hot. I like Claire's character because like uptight is, you know. Like that episode where she, where they caught him banging yeah. and she was like in her underwear? Hot. <laughs> but <laughs> Sophia Vergara is, is, is But that's like yeah. we were talking about 40. that intimidatingly pretty person. Like the, like some people are so attractive that they're intimidating. Like if you met them in person, you couldn't Did, even make like it angry boobs, you wouldn't be right. able to talk. Sophia Vergara would be like angry boobs to the extreme. Did you see there was I've an inter- so much about angry there was boobs. A- oh my God. Do you guys remember angry boobs? <laughs> yeah. I, I, I never saw angry you never boobs. never did? Like we, I, we went like three or four times as we were about to move and I never I this, saw I don't know. If a we, lot of people may not remember who that is. When we were at the old office at South Congress, I guess I wasn't there, but like South Congress no, off. Regular Congress. Regular Congress. Congress. It was right Congress at seven. Roaring Fork. It was a bar- bartender we talked about on the podcast ages ago. Yeah, angry she, boobs. And she was terrifying. She was, if she's listening to the podcast right now, I love you. <laughs> um, she was amazing. And she we called her angry boobs because she had this. Big hands. She had giant hands, giant, like, pendulous, beautiful hands. Not, I wouldn't say that pendulous were like, at all. They were like, well, like yeah. floating, and then She would floating. wear, like, next to nothing. But you couldn't make, and she had beautiful eyes, too. You couldn't make eye contact with her, though. And so, she was mean. And she just was mad all the time. She was like a Medusa. Yeah. And I think she was yeah. mad because no man had ever made eye contact with her. <laughs> like, to her, I, I'm assuming that she must, like, her impression of dudes must be that, like, every guy drools and goes, I blah, blah, I blah, blah. <laughs> But Gavin and I would go and get drinks there and just, like, stare around her. You know, it's just like the yeah. sun. The, the aura is good enough. Yeah. He just, you just you like boxes. you catch yeah. her. <laughs> I miss her. I wonder what happened to her. I don't know. She stopped working there. Yeah, yeah. there was no reason to go. She probably ascended to heaven. Our, our uh, <laughs> the, the uh, bartender at Frank is still there. The one that Gavin fell in love oh, with. Oh yeah, she, oh, yeah, she's she still is there. there. There's a lot of talented women at Frank. Yeah, yeah. I, I was yeah, really gonna are. say the Austin, uh, honestly, I, Austin is a very attractive city, men and women, and they're always it's warm here, so they're always half naked. So yeah. congratulations to everyone coming to RTX. Yes, hey, no you have things to look forward to. I saw an interview with Sofia Vergara recently. I think it was on The Tonight Show where she was on the show with uh, Gerard Butler. Uh-huh. Gerard Butler was the first guest and she comes out as the second guest. And uh, I think it was Jay Leno was like, oh, you two know each other? Sofia Vergara's like, yeah, he owes me money. <laughs> <laughs> like, what? Like, yeah, he owes me 20 bucks. And I guess like he, she lent him some money for a valet once and never paid her back. Oh, and awesome. she's like still bitter about it. Oh, and she was like, and then, and, and, and no, no. And then she, and, like, and she was like, and then, you know, a couple days later, he comes up to me at a party with like 20 bucks in his hands. Like, hey, here's the money for the other night. And of course I'm going to say, I don't know what he's talking about. What does that look like? <laughs> <laughs> and like and she's like, at 20 bucks? Come on. <laughs> nice. It's really funny. <laughs> so anyway. We were talking about something before that. Oh, we were talking about movies. Yes, yes, movies. Okay. And so have you guys, have any, has anyone seen Bridesmaids yet? You haven't. I haven't. I, want I to. love I have Kristen Wiig and I love Maya Rudolph, so yeah, I really I need to see it. it. It looks good. Well, don't watch your and mic. you're <laughs> not going to see it because you're a snob about movie theaters. Yeah. It's at the Southmore, but is this Southmore off too your crowded? List? Yeah. If you go, if you go like earlier, usually it's not too bad. Are you to theater with no people? Yeah, like, that's right? ideal. Yeah. yeah. Galaxy 10, where we saw Fast Five and D Box. I'm, I'm, I'm never going there. Remember we talked about this. I always see dudes getting blowjobs, and oh, the yeah, theaters always right. smell like B.O. Yeah, right, you need right. to get those blinders that horses have, just yeah. so you don't see any homeless boobs or blowjobs. Just sit in underwear somewhere. Wait, wait, what, what theater was that? <laughs> <laughs> to the Galaxy Highland. Just, like, just hang out in the parking lot and hope for the best. Every, yeah. every other movie I see there, when I leave, there's a dude getting a blowjob in the car next to mine. Man, by the way, that area of town... There are fucking tumbleweeds in that part of town now. It is a ghost land. Mm-hmm. Like, we, when Bernie and I went and saw, and Bernie and Ben and I went and saw Fast Five there, I had just been at Barton's, Barton's Creek Mall earlier in the day, where you have to park, like, on the other side of 360 to walk mm-hmm. in because yeah. it's so fucking crowded. And then I literally drive from there to the Galaxy Highlands, which is next to the Highlands Mall, and it looked like the mall wasn't open. Yeah. It essentially isn't. I mean, the community college, local community college bought that mall, and I think there's only oh, like three really? stores yeah. open left. In Highland? No. Yeah. yeah, they bought a large portion. No, they, they, they bought did, the rest of it. Did they the have their classes yeah. set up oh, where like wow. Claire's used to be? Not yet. <laughs> they're, they're, I think once they, they're waiting for leases training. to start expiring, and then they're going to convert it to classrooms. There's still stores and stuff in there, right? Yeah. They're 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 essentially closing down, though. And they have the food court for, you know, break. They have all those restaurants that you've never heard of, and like Palace is over. That place is pretty 
really good. Crash Palace is it's pretty good. good. Yeah. Should we but, mention uh, that's right over where RTX is going to be held? Yeah. Oh, yeah. The, the thriving <laughs> like part of town that RTX is going to be taking place in. <laughs> All right, Friday night. See you guys over there. Highland Mall. <laughs> just, just run across I-35. You'll be fine. I, do we want to talk about RTX at all? Anything we need to bring up? Oh, let's. Actually, I want to talk about bring your Bring your snake biting kits. We found a snake. It was huge. But we looked it up. It's a rat snake. It's not going to kill you. Harmless. Oh, dude, we went we went disc golfing this weekend, uh, me and Ben and uh, my friend Daniel. And like we, I literally stepped over a snake. And they're like, oh, my God. And I completely missed it. I have a photo of it. It was it was like it was a snake's head was in a hole, and its body was like poking out of it. It was the creepiest thing ever. So snakes in Texas. Yay. Anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> Do you not like snakes? Are you not, are you not a fan oh, of snakes? Oh, come on. You know that. I didn't I'm know that. Terrified of snakes. Oh, really? I, I, I didn't know that. Ammo. Like Indiana Jones is brave around snakes compared to me. Yeah, no, wow. I shut down. Really? Like if, if I if I was I in should, a room me, with a I rattlesnake right now, I would seize up, fall over, and let it eat me. <laughs> like I can't. I would. I wouldn't even try to defend myself. Dislocate his jaw and slowly yeah. devour you. I, I, uh, I don't. Wow. Like it. Yeah. Wow. No, I have a real problem. Real, real problem. Listen. That's awesome. Why? Because they're fucking no, scary no, no. Well, and gross. They, they remind you of penises or something. You were chased by a water moccasin once, right? I, I was chased by a lot of snakes at a lot of times. Yeah, <laughs> they just target you. Times. They, no, they can they, smell like, fear. Is that the name of like the rival gang <laughs> when you were in high school? The, water the, moccasins. Moccasins. the snakes. Coming no, man, you. I grew up. I spent a good portion of my childhood in Jacksonville, Florida, oh, on God. the St. Johns River. It's like there's like set, there's more water moccasins than people in Jacksonville, Florida. Wow, it's a fucking <laughs> scary place to live. That's it. Okay. I don't like snakes because of that. Yeah, I can see that. Well, I grew up in Oregon, and the water moccasins are in. That's why Gus doesn't like white people. <laughs> <laughs> There weren't, no, very, there weren't very many where to, I grew up. Okay. Not to keep like, fixating on sex, which is, you know, what happens. But It's your doing. It's my, no, I'm going to drop it. You're, it's mine. No, go for it. No, I'm going to drop it. Come on, harlot. Sex no. <laughs> Let's continue talking about venomous snakes. What were you going to say about Oregon snakes? Oh, yeah, I'm not scared of snakes because nothing in Oregon can really kill you, except maybe in southern Oregon. No, that's not true. Except for because ennui we were and sadness. <laughs> <laughs> that's all can kill seasonal, you in Oregon. Seasonal depression will make you want to <laughs> blow your brains out. But that's about it. I, we were talking about that the other day, you and Patricia and I, about how Texas is so dangerous. And you were like, what are you guys talking about? Oregon is cougars. We're scared of cougars. We've had fucking cougars, and people get killed by cougars. And not only cougars, poachers. We got I poachers friends, here. Okay, I There's mountain lions in Texas, in too. In the county that I, I grew up in, Benton There's County. There's cougars up at Sherlock's in North Austin, if you want to go. <laughs> <laughs> really? Oh, yeah. Good to know. Dangerous. Uh, yeah, maybe that's joke like, of the day. Yeah. <laughs> Way to go. Yeah. Um, okay, so in my county in Oregon that I grew up in, Benton County, it has, like, the highest poaching incident or in like, oh no, it's a gun accident, hunting accident. Oh, accident like that? Yeah, yeah, like hunting accident. Like the, Dick Cheney style? Yeah, it's bad up there. And um, my mom would be always like, okay, we well, can't go out because there's like a certain part of the year I couldn't go out because of cougars because um, I lived, grew up kind of near the woods, like mm-hmm. by Christmas tree farms and stuff. And then the rest of the year it was like, poachers can't go outside. Yeah, but to like, be wow. fair, your mom also never wanted you to learn how to swim because people can no, drown no. in water. She <laughs> wanted me to learn how to swim. She put me in swimming classes, but she was terrified of water, yeah. But, no, let's stay away from my mom. Let's talk about <laughs> let's the hazards of deflect. Oregon. Okay. I had a friend um, who grew up, her parents have a Christmas tree farm, which I ended up working on. That sounds awesome. When I was older. Yeah, I used to work there. But um, she, they had poaching problems. Like, people would just come onto the property and start trying to shoot deer. They'd poach trees? <laughs> no, there were deer. There were deer oh. everywhere. Um, so she once was out in the field with her kids, and they were, like, tagging trees or, like, grooming or whatever. And they got shot at. Like, my fr- I had a friend that I went to school with. Mm-hmm. Her name was Lynn. She like that she was almost shot by a poacher, and mm-hmm. then at some point, like she grabbed her kids, slammed into the ground, and was like, "There are people here! There are people here!" And then the poachers like got in their truck and like peeled out. But like people are always getting shot at where I grew up at. Mm-hmm. Like you had to watch it if you walked outside your door. Plus, so you didn't look like a deer. You had to wear yeah. like orange vests. A lot of a lot of people don't know this, but Oregon also <laughs> highest rate of hacky sack knee in America and devil stick related incidents. I thought that was Denver. Devil stick related incidents. Yeah, a lot of a lot of poked out eyes. The old uh, sticks. Left-handed cigarette <laughs> cough. Yeah. It's like it's like seventy percent of busking related accidents in America. <laughs> Man, speaking of busking, there was a very aggressive busker the other day at Airport in Thirty Five. Really? Who like came up to my car and I was like, no, no, I was like, try like don't don't clean my window. He started cleaning my window. And, and I was like, I don't even have any cash. So the light turned green, and he was still cleaning my window. I just fucking took <laughs> off. <laughs> and he was in the middle of airport. He was like, whoa, like yelling at me. <laughs> and I was just like looking at him in my rearview mirror. And my and my wipers were up because he had picked them up to wash my window. <laughs> and I was like just <laughs> driving down the road. Bernie would be so upset. He has such a, a soft spot in his heart. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and I was like, fucking ass. And I was mad. <laughs> It's like fucking asshole touch my car. No, Bernie that drives me like, crazy. Sir, you cleaned my window with spit, so I'm gonna put you through community college. Yeah. 
And it was to watch out Airport 35. I will uh, watch out. out there in force. Thank you. Oh, God. But anyway, we, we need to wrap up. Okay. okay. We're, uh, we're going a little long. RTX this week. But RTX this RTX week. RTX this weekend. I'm crazy doing a video podcast this week, but we'll get no, it done. Not only crazy, but you're an asshole. <laughs> oh. You're like, I'm sorry. I'm going to be too busy editing to help. Yeah. Have fun. Uh, <laughs> the, the snake will help out. I'm going to take this out on you this uh, weekend. All right. We'll figure out a way. Okay. Well, thanks for watching, everyone. Right. Bye. Bye.